the Z value or the standardized score, what that does is that let us, that's, lets us compare different distributions with different means and different standard deviations so we can look at them relatively within our normal distribution. And so our Z score just has a formula. It's our, our data point minus our mean divided by our standard deviation, and, and that gives us our Z score. So let's apply that on example five here. It says, I want to find my standard deviation if X is 28.3, my mean is 24.6, and my Z score is 0 0.63. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write down my formula because I probably don't have this memorized yet. So Z equals X minus my mean. I'll divide by the standard deviation. Well, I'm going to plug in what I know here. I know my Z score is 0 0.63. I know my data value is 28.3, and I know my mean is 24.6, and I want to find the standard deviation. So I'm going to simplify that just a tad. So 0 0.63 equals, let's take 28.3 minus 24.6. Whoops, 0.3 minus 24.6. So my, that simplifies to 3.7. So I got 3.7 divided by my standard deviation equals 0 0.63. Now I want to solve for the standard deviation, but I hate standard deviation being in the denominator. So I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides. So I'm going to say 1 over 0.63 equals my standard deviation divided by 3.7. Then to solve for the standard deviation, I'll multiply both sides by 3.7. So I take 3.7 divided by 0.63. And my standard deviation is 5.87. Now, indicate the position of X in the distribution. Well, your Z score, which is 0.63, means your 0.63 standard deviations to the right to the mean. So if I graph my normal distribution, I'm going to be about right there, 0.63 standard deviations. When it changes concavity, that's where your, your one standard deviation is. Now let's take a look at another example here. It says the cholesterol level for adult males for a specific racial group are normally distribution, distributed with a mean of 158.3 and a standard deviation of 6.6. Find the probability of having a cholesterol level greater than 150. Then use the graphing calculator to sketch the corresponding area under the curve. I'm going to show you how to use the table and use the graphing calculator. No matter what we do, if we want to use the table, we want this is the reason we do z-scores. So my z-score is going to be my data value minus my mean divided by my standard deviation. So my z-score is going to be my 100, uh, 150 minus 158.3 divided by my standard deviation of 6.6. .6. So I'll do that. I'll take 150 minus 158.3. And I get negative 8.3. divided by 6.6. .6. So if we take negative, negative 8.3 divided by 6.6, .6, 
and we get a, a z-score of about negative 1.26. Not quite, but it's brought it to the nearest hundredth. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a table of z-scores. So go into Schoology and go into our, our unit, Unit 8, Lesson 6. This is where I have it at. It's a link to a website is what it is. So let me get the right class here. So if you use this table on the test, obviously I expect you to use your computer. And here's what it is. Now notice, it tells you right away Underneath the curve is going to give us to the left. Since we're looking greater than, it's going to be one minus this value because we're looking at the part that's greater than, not less than. So here's how I read the table. I want to find negative 1.26. So I, I look at my table. I go down to negative 1.2. And you see, see negative 1.2 there? And then I notice it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So can we see it right there? So negative 1.26 is 0 0.08 is 0 0.1038. That's to the left. So point, the probability that you're to the left is 0 0.0138. But I want to find that actual value. So I take 1 minus that because I want to be to the right. So 1 minus 0 0.1038, and we get about 0.892. You get about 0 0.892. So you got an 80, about a 90% chance of being greater, being greater than now you can use your graphing calculator here. And here's how you do it. There's a couple different ways we, we can do this and I'll show you each way. So first off, we're gonna use our Desmos graphing calculator now. What happens is in your Desmos graphing calculator, we're gonna go hit our function key, go to distribution, and you see normal distribution on the left here? Now. It says our mean is zero and a standard deviation is one. That's if you're using z-score. And you could just do that. Then what happens, I click on the cumulative CDF. And then what I want to do, since I already did my z-score, I want to find being to the right of negative 1.26. So what I do is I'm going to have my minimum be negative 1.26. And my maximum is infinity. And so I get about 0.89. You can see if I blow up my curve here so you can see it a little bit better from 0 to 1. I get the same answer I did with my table, didn't I? Now you could also do this normal distribution. Let me create a new graph. You don't actually have to find the z-score. So what we're going to do here is we're still hit functions. We're going to hit normal distribution. But this time, I'm gonna, rather than having to find the z-score, I'm going to type in my mean and my standard deviation in my, pro, in my calculator. So I know my mean is 158.3, so I'm going to say 158.3. So I'll go 158.3, comma. My standard deviation is 6.6. .6. I want to find the cumulative probability, and then I want to be to the right of 150. So I'm going to go from 150 to my maximum, which is, again, notice I get the same answer. The only problem with this, I can't see that curve very well, can I? Whoops. Whoa. Let's try that again. So I'm going to go from, let's go,
There we can see our we can see our curve then. And there we have it. And we've actually put plots it right on our curve for us right here. So here's 150, and we get 0.89. So that's kind of cool. I, I like that. Okay, let's take a look at example seven. It says find the probability of having a cholesterol value between 145 and 165. Then use the graphing calculator to sketch the corresponding area under the curve. So this one, I'm going to do the same thing I just got done doing. Except what I'm going to do on my curve is I'm not my minimum is going to be since I want to go from 145. Sorry, my hand, I want to go from 145 to 165. So what happens is I start at 145. And then I'm, whoops, 145. Then I'm going to go to 165 for my maximum. So I've got my area under the curve is 0.823. So let's sketch this out. So here's my normal distribution. Whoa, that's terrible. Let me try that again. And so what I'm going to do is my area under the curve is going to be right there, which is 0.823. Using the graph and calculator is much easier here than if you use your table. Because what happens if you use your table, what happens, we have to convert these to z-scores. So I'm going to find the I'm going to find the z-score for 145, find the z-score for 165, then go to my table, find the area to the left of the curve of 145, find the area to the left of cur curve of 165, and then subtract those two answers. So you you can still do it with z-scores, but the graphing calculator turns out to be a lot easier.